there were and are significant problems with therapeutic relationship going to either of the extremes. One, where analysts tend to be completely absent from it, so that the relationship is too impersonal, and psychoanalysis has been criticized for this, the classical psychoanalytic model was. And then the opposite problem is uh, psychoanalysis being too much involved, or as this is called in contemporary psychoanalytic literature, boundary violations in psychoanalysis. This is something that also has been described very often in popular uh, literature or culture, in movies and elsewhere, and ranges from uh, too much support in a way that is too friendly, almost uh, parental, to asking patients or demanding of patients to do something for the analyst, be it financial or actually some formal activity, and to what is most frequently uh, discussed, sexual boundary violations. The problem became very obvious to Freud very early, around the year 1912, when both of his most trusted collaborators, Carl Gustav Jung, who at that moment was the president of the International Psychoanalytic Association, and Chandler Ferenczi, who Freud wanted as a son-in-law, Freud wanted his daughter Matilda to marry Ferenczi. Both Jung and Ferenczi got involved with female patients. Uh, in Ferenczi's case, at least briefly, uh, head over heels in love with uh, one of his uh, patients, and in Jung's case, possibly even a series of affairs that lasted for years and decades later, and it seems to me very well documented that one of the patients then used to live in the same house where Jung and his wife lived. Freud's reaction to this, given that Freud was, as a person, um, very prudish, extremely strict with his, himself, completely focused on ambition, success, and such stuff, was that he tried to prevent this from ever happening again. And his famous technical papers, written in these years, 1912 to 1916, 17, are very conservative, and he uh, confessed that he intentionally wrote them in this very conservative fashion, so as to prevent this from happening. My impression is that Freud is not so much concerned that patients are suffering, or they were abused, or they have completely lost hope into the uh, possibility of overcoming their problems, but that Freud is more concerned for the reputation of psychoanalysis. Because at this time, psychoanalysts in 1910, there were 50 psychoanalysts present at the conference when they founded the International. The world of the university didn't accept psychoanalysis, the world of psychiatry didn't accept psychoanalysis. It was generally accused of being a Jewish science, so in a way Freud felt isolated. And he felt if people start thinking of psychoanalysis as a place where doctors put young female patients on the couch until they fall in love with them, and they can have affairs with them, the, the, the movement, the discipline would be completely destroyed. The technical papers worked to a large extent to make psychoanalysis of the coming decades very rigid to the level of many analysts around the globe not saying good morning, not saying have a nice weekend, not communicating or sharing anything with the patient outside of the 45 or 50 minute sessions. Unfortunately, this did not work as a good prevention of the problem, because as always going to another extreme does not solve problems, and sexual boundary violations in the world of psychoanalysis and psychotherapy still exist and have always existed. 
a large study conducted in the early 1990s where psychotherapists from the United States and Canada were interviewed, not psychoanalysts only, showed that between 19 and 12 percent of them admit having had romantic or sexual relationships with patients. We cannot know the real number because uh, not everyone admits, as in every other situation. And then in the 1990s, in the beginning of the first decade of this century, more research on this problem started. Uh, probably the groundbreaking work was done by Glenn Gabbard. I think in 2003 he published the first book with the title Boundaries and Boundary Violations in Psychoanalysis. And various institutes then started developing ethic codes, ethic commissions in a better way than before. Patients were encouraged to file complaints and similar stuff. There is a long history, unfortunately also, of psychoanalysts having strange financial arrangements with their patients. Gabbard describes the case of Ernst Jones, who gave one of his patients advice how to invest money on stock exchange. And when the patient, and this happened in the session, and when the patient earned a lot of money, Jones wanted a share, he wanted a percentage. And similar things were going on with people charging for supervisions, some unbelievably high amounts of money or similar stuff, unfortunately still taking place today. On a, on a less malignant side, is the situation of many analysts who care about their patients beyond the limits of what's professional. Let me just mention, for instance, that several of his child patients lived in Winnicott's house for a certain amount of time and that Frieda from Reichman didn't have a single friend in the last years of her life, so she would take patients to concerts theater performances and such stuff. Not as malignant, yet unprofessional, not for the benefit of the patient, wouldn't help the patient recover and feel better. The work done over the last 20 years is showing several various patterns uh, that are behind this. One of them, very frequent, is the utter loneliness of many psychoanalysts and having no social life outside of the office. Having no family, friends, pastime, hobbies, uh, exercise, travels, unrelated to psychoanalysis. I don't know how to explain this, whether there's something about psychoanalysis that makes people so passionate and obsessed by it, or Psychoanalysis is a profession chosen by a certain group of people who tend not to be very sociable, yet it happens all too often that patients are someone's only friends and then over time become confidants and then over time may become lovers. The prevention of this should seem obvious, I think, and it is on the one hand in constant intervision and uh, preferably supervision as well, but also in defending your private life, your time, your social relationships, your interests that are completely unrelated to the work. The other thing might be that there are people whose personality structure is too problematic and to whom uh, personal analysis and supervision cannot happen and help enough so that their dark side, uh, to, to put it metaphorically, will never disappear. Here I'll mention briefly the case of one of the most famous persons in the history of psychoanalysis, Ernst Jones, Freud's biographer, one of the members of the secret committee and so on about whom we now have a lot of evidence 
from the various archives in the UK and in Canada that he did many highly unethical things. The researcher Philip Kuhn from England has published several papers on this where the accusations of primary school girls against Jones as a physician, as a medical doctor who worked in these schools, both in England and in Canada, are well documented. And to the best of my knowledge, this was never discussed within the Freud's inner circle or the international psychoanalytic or everywhere. This is a concern and this is something we should all be aware of and, and work on, although, in my opinion, this is not something that is a threat that comes from the majority of psychoanalysts and psychotherapists in the world. We should be aware that it exists and we should have prevention mechanisms and we should ethic have ethical codes that will um, suspend people from, from work who cannot be helped, but that is not the major problem. The relationship remains the central point of psychoanalytic treatments and relationships, all relationships everywhere in our lives have so many nuances and so many different sides to them. And then over time at specific moments can become problematic and painful in this or that way. We must not be blind, but also I find the usual descriptions of transference and boundary violations given in many uh, American Hollywood movies or television series and so on, completely exaggerated and unrealistic. So let's find a realistic approach to this very important problem.